Hello, everyone. How you doing? It's me, Justin Redrick, Bitcoin vegan, author uh, from Bars to Bitcoin, uh, one of the Black Bitcoin Millionaire Mods. And uh, this was a um, this is a very great room. I want to say thank you again to all the Black people, Brother Sinclair Skinner. I call him the GOAT. I mean, everything he's done, you know, in this uh, in this space for our people, and just the opportunity to have different generations of uh, the African diaspora, you know, to be able to come and speak their piece on Bitcoin and uh, everything. Board. So uh, today I'm here to speak about, you know, a little bit about what it is I see as far as like in Black community. Um, I know when we were on Clubhouse earlier, I mean not Clubhouse, but we were on the platform with uh, Miss Deidre. She was speaking about um, just ways of disruption and, um, you know, how I, and she was asking the question, like, you know, how could that disruption be with Bitcoin? And, you know, I started to take it a step further because like in my own, one of my own stories, I share how I always felt disruption was important. Like even in my book, From Bars to Bitcoin, I tell a story about just how, you know, you want to try to pull yourself up from from wherever you are, you know, it started off with homelessness in high school, losing our house, losing a friend, uh, going to college and dropping out, going to prison and coming to entrepreneurship and then the Bitcoin. And, um, you know, there has to be a different level of thought because when I came home, I'm just like, you know, I don't want to do anything that's average. I don't want to do the the status quo for what you have people who come home. So I remember I said, uh, I want to say whatever's going on in the world, I, um, whatever is going on in the world that's, that I can majorly benefit from to be early, uh, that was something I had wanted to do. And you know, I ran across Bitcoin Zay, Isaiah Jackson, and we started talking about Bitcoin. Now, one of the reasons why I felt it was important to find something that was going to last, you know, long term, because all of the, excuse me, the heartaches and all the struggles were so immediate back to back to back, that having a short term, uh, short sighted view of life was one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest obstacles I feel like we face as people. We all, as a collective, seem to have like a sh uh, short or very high time preference. And that will always, you know, be a, a dagger and whatever you can have. So I uh, spoke about uh, one is just see how that disruption can take place. And when you use disruption, I believe, like I was reading a book called Moonshots, and I think it's very vital that, you know, Black people as a whole look for ways to start building in industries that are not yet seen, you know, that aren't believed in too much, uh, because that's where the real value comes. Uh, we're, in my opinion, it seems like we're so far behind that we should look to build things for the future, like exponential things in the future. I remember uh, me, me and Brother Sinclair were talking about just how, you know, data could be used to track, um, like you could use the data to check if a woman is pregnant just by just using keystrokes on the phone. So those are the type of industries I feel that we need to flood into now, even though it might take five or 10 years for it to be developed, because by then we would be able to have our foot into a market that's not even that is not even uh, known yet and so once people start coming to that market they have to come to you first uh, so within that I always hear people speak about the the uh, wealth gap but to me the wealth gap won't be nowhere near short and if we're doing the fundamental things that everyone else led, has already led or done or left the crumbs for us to pick up and I think Bitcoin is a way to do that um, if not building a company on it if not educating on it just being there and learning it and using it um, in my opinion, everything's about speed. Everything's about how you can effectively move forward from in the book from bars to Bitcoin. It's also detailed as just, you know, where you allow, where you apply your focus. You know, you don't want to have the focus of someone who can't move forward and not, you know, think past um, your present, your your immediate circumstance. Hold on, hold on. Justin, you, you're doing a great look. Man, what made you write this book, bro? Like, like to tell them the real deal. You give me the like, Professor Red. I pray. And look, we down with this. Is all PhD. We got it. We all good. But come on, Professor. Look, talk about this journey, bro. Like, what happened, bro? Don't give us the like. Get you know, you got to do cliffhangers. I'm sure you're only gonna give me a little tease. But kind of like, all right, I got bars. You. Look, I got you. I got bars. you. Man. Is a bars in the club? What are the bars? Oh, I see bars. It's prison yeah. bars, man. So being in prison is like when, like, so coming home, what made me write the book was the fact that people are lost. You know, we're lost as a people. Uh, in certain areas, in certain areas, especially coming home from prison, man, I would come home and that they just had a lot of random programs for guys who come home and you're like, okay, this is cool, but this isn't setting nobody up to win. Like, I don't want to be 35. I don't want to be 35 or 25, 26 coming home, working for 18 or, or 14 hours an hour with these teenage jobs. So you just start seeing just how I saw, I mean, I saw myself, man, damn, you don't really want to do any of this. And nothing really challenges you. So you're, you're stuck. You're getting taken advantage of. Like, I used to work this crazy job. I worked $12 an hour for 12, $12 an hour. 
eight hours a day or 12 hours a day with no insurance. And just because you have a record here, take the money, just go work. You know, you're taking advantage of a lot of ways. So then I also had the, the component of just how you could build yourself up from zero with Bitcoin. Because a lot of times we hear people say, oh, Bitcoin is great. It can help you do, you know, it can help you build yourself. But most of the people talking have not, they've already were built before they came to Bitcoin. So it's not a great um, demonstration. But how did, mm -hmm. it, how did it differ from some of those programs? When you look at what you've done uh, with Bitcoin and what was being told to you when you got out, what are some of the things that you see that, you know, were different? Like what, you know, give me some of that. What was different? You said the other ones were, you didn't really see them as being helpful. What was the real difference? Oh, the real difference was that, um, like I was speaking about disruption, the real difference was that we were early. To Everything else was already watered down, you know, like no disrespect, but you're, you're having people go through, get jobs that won't get them past a certain tax bracket or, or that just that just overbroke. You know, like you're going to constantly be in that fiat. Like I saw that the money was safe. There was no disruption. You know I mean, there was no, uh, there was no uh, government in the way. There was no authority figure. It, so it was just bam. So was that from the utility of it or, or were you in conversations with people about actually developing like, you know, programming on you know, learning solidity for Ethereum or C++? Mm -hmm. Was there any type of coding in that conversation or were you saying in much in, in the ways that we looked at it was this could be something that replaces something. So even if I don't know how to code, like tell me the spectrum of opportunities that you think would be advantageous for somebody uh, coming out of a, you know, like my, my, you know, I got family members in drug rehab right now, as well as prison. Like when you come out of those things, the first thing he got was like a job at the grocery store. He's been one of those frontline people during the COVID because, you know, they see him as, you know, they got a, even the mask was tricky. They wouldn't even give him a new mask every day. And he literally yeah. working, you know, but he's in California, so they got all benefits. So he literally working the grocery store and literally got every, they got workman's comp, they got time off, time and a half. I mean, right. California does have a good, like, uh, uh, you know, safety net. But with that being said, the ceiling's quite low. What, do you see in the many of us have friends and family that have been incarcerated looking at this particular industry this technology someone comes out what are some of the most approachable ways to get them interested in this technology number one showing them that it works uh that's the number one thing showing first of all education showing them that it's real you know what we do on black bitcoin billionaires what you all do it always starts with that but how do you connect that so like when i tell guys in prison you know you you really go most black people go to prison over money 95 percent of black black crime or even though that crime might be selling drugs someone might have gotten killed might have robbed somebody they have a high percentage of all operating somewhere around money but then you know we have the fact that we don't know nothing about money really as far as like as a group financial literacy is is a f as a group so you, what are the, 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 the side effects of that? You have people going to jail for money that loses value over time. Like there's this one guy in the group, he's been in the group, um, um, Ms. Kimberly Booker, she um, introduced us and he comes from bars of Bitcoin. He said he, he did 30 years. And so he did 30 years from like 89 or the 80, 89, wherever up until 2020. And it's like, all right, so what was the value of the dollar during that point in time? About 95, 96 cents. By the time he came home, the dollar's worth like 85 cents. So without having the real knowledge of money or what this is, you end up doing insane things for things that lose value and you don't know them. So, I mean, it always starts with education, but like what type? And I think a lot of it has to do with opening folks' eyes to see like, yo, you, you're, you're kind of wasting a lot of time on something that won't work. And, you know, then you show them that there's a way to do it with Bitcoin. Now within like, what did they go out and learn? Sometimes you gotta let that be on them. Um, you might just wanna do the finance thing, you might do the tech thing. Like I challenge the brothers to read Mastering Bitcoin one, two, and three, and then pick what you like. You know, use your brain the way you know how. But the difference is, it's like, it's the opportunity. There's no like past, like just having a job telling folks, 
or following in that um that that mediocrity like well you know i just got a job i got a job it's like yeah but we need advancement now there's no advancement with with just what, what's presented to most guys coming over first is there a stigma in the sense that i know when we're hiring and this is why i know some of these projects are fake because there's just not enough people developing. Like even when the ICO craze or some of these altcoins, mm-hmm. there's just not enough blockchain developers for these things to get this prolific. And then the ones that do, uh, who are out there, they get quickly taken by some of these companies that get disproportionately because of you know the white su- supremacist ideology in Silicon Valley, they, they'll pick a certain few folks to get funded. So then they have the ability to leverage it. And then you have, you know, brothers and sisters with their own dreams. So they're not necessarily trying to, you know, help you build yours. With the, with having a, you know, coming out of prison, you know, are, are the barriers less to get into coding and developing a blockchain? Or do you think maybe there's still a stigma and it gets funny style? Like, well, how would you say that? I, well, I haven't actually tried to get into coding. Um, however, from what I from what I hear, you know, that stigma is there, which is why a lot of times, um, well, like just with certain certain incidences, I don't know if it's the entire whole, but I'm sure like they lie, they lie within there because of that that ideology that even unconscious motives are there, um, which is why a lot of times I hear, you know, a lot of times in BBB. We talk about like developing it on our own within the own own network we have to create within you know create those own projects or developments and make those those types of realities possible, uh, and that's the uh, that's probably the real reason why I can say I have not really heard much of it because it's so you know in Bitcoin and the blockchain you are so you have to be so entrepreneurial that it's almost embedded in that, like my idea, like with Miss Kim Booker, she has an organization called BTC Impact. It's like, yo, you just come home from prison and you just hop and learn about Bitcoin, whatever you want to do, mining, you know, education or coding, because it's like, all you need to do is be taught correctly, right? And let's say we have great teachers like Lamar and it's just how you funnel that in yourself. Because I mean, if the stigma is there, then it can't be there. I, I can't say 100% I know if it is or not. But if it is, what I already had, not I, but if there's already a plan in place for it to be in-house, grass-rooted from the beginning, then we wouldn't have to actually decide about the the entire complex of that. But um, I wouldn't say, I can't say for sure how that is within the space, but no, I, I feel I, it could be. No, I think you're making a good point. You're saying by creating the world we want to live in, I don't know if they race. I, I don't go over there. There's nothing over there that I'm interested in because I go places where people are happy to see me, not where I got to make them figure out it's okay to. So I, I definitely, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Unless somebody asked me that about Uber and taxis, is so all the taxis still uh, racist? I said, I don't know. I ain't caught a cab in a long time. I call <laughs> Uber. They still could be racist. That's on them. Yeah, that's not on my time. Yeah, look, I'm not even entertaining it. I'm not integrating it i'm not trying to explain it i look i know my car about to come i'll see you in a minute like i'm that guy (laughs) humbly i I think i definitely catch the the sophistication the point you made you know if those people are not accepting it is what it is but you're creating the world you want to live in how do we get more brothers and sisters again so many folks have family members if they haven't been experienced exposed to this 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 system of white supremacy ideology is at war with us and some are, are political prisoners in some ways and some of, of us been killed i think uh those of us who've made it this far in, in minimum security out here what can we do uh to be supportive of our brothers and sisters coming out uh through technology through blockchain specifically what can we do i think that that part about leveraging uh, with with the black uh, uh, Bitcoin billionaires, it sounds like there's some community that that that's super helpful. Maybe within that community, what are some of the types of things you think would be super helpful? Because again, sometimes there's like the hype, and then there's the serious folks. So you, mm-hmm. it it takes probably both. You need some hype, woo woo, you know, rah rah. But you also need those folks when no one's around that's just grinding. So mm-hmm. for, for that grinding type, what if you were going to say, look, this is what we need. Like if we had like five of these folks. So let me get this right. You're asking what would. What kind what of, type, of what types of person would you need? Yeah. There's many people listening that aren't on uh, Clubhouse or Twitter or on any of these groups, but they're listening today. 
and they might catch mm -hmm. this. What is it that you're looking for in support? They might see what you're saying, agree with you, and like, how do I connect or how do I do this for myself? How, what type of person are you looking for, for for support and what can they do to help what you're doing or help them? Oh, okay, great. So uh, it's important of, I guess, um, like what I do or what takes place in BBB, it would have to be someone who's, who's number one, open to learn, um, learn not just Bitcoin or anything, but learn what the issues are, you know, and if they are too deep, then just trust the fact that the people guiding the uh, ship can understand but um as far as you know supporting brothers in that uh that capacity it could always come through you know levels of 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 how they how how they would like to i guess do business or how would they want to you know leverage their resources to help um i think a lot of it can also deal with networking you know sometimes people have uh advantages to different networks to to open doors quicker than you having to go you know through the regular rat race um, but also, it always has to start out with generosity. You know what I mean? You have, this is something you have to genuinely want to do. You know, not just say, hey, you know, I want to be down with this, that, and the third. And, you know, hey, uh, someone might bring up the fact, okay, what about some sponsorships or this, that, however you want to help this movement. And, you know, if you're not able to be, to bring, to reciprocate the value, you know, past like what you're speaking, then we'll, then it's all right. But then just saying kind words without any real follow-up or action, uh, those are the type of things that you don't want to have. Those type of people, you know, you don't want to have, um, you know, come to your establishment. So that could be, let's say, for instance, um, how could that help? Uh, anyways, could be as far as simply trying to, let's say with the book, I would like to have a connection on how to get that book into prisons, whether it's on a list, there you uh, go. Uh, talk to us now. To talk to now, you talk. Th that's what I'm talking. Just to say, make it plain black. Man, I'm make it plain. Come on, I'm trying to. I'm getting. I'm to saying. You. All right, so that, that no, 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 no. Hold. Right. Let's let look, look. We need to get this book in the prisons. So everybody listening, we're gonna get brother Justin Reddick's book in all the prisons. I know we got some folks from DC government listening right now, and we got. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna re reach out to my brother Ronald Moten. We're gonna get this book in the DC prison. Now listen, we don't want nobody in the prison system, but for those that are there, we're gonna make <laughs> sure they got bars from Bitcoin. Now, now look, cause they always ask what, what happened at Black Blockchain Summit this year? This is what we do. You know, I, I tell people it's not about what happens during is what we do afterwards. It's just like the, the Declaration of Independence. We know they did something because they went and start shooting them, uh, them Europeans. So we, we're gonna leave here and start making sure that we got some books in these uh, prisons uh, as we defund the police. So with that being said, I think that's- the <laughs> here's an, All right, so here's another thing as well. Like, all right, seriously, so now that I hear- no, I'm serious, but I'm serious about that. I'm serious about that DC. So make sure you follow up with me on that. I'm, I'm going to follow, I always follow, I've been following up for five years. I'll make sure I follow up. I'm so, uh, and another thing is like, just getting the knowledge in the correct people's hands, man. Like, all right, so there are situations where you have reissue programs where people cannot really help people re-enter because they haven't really been that person to re-enter. And um, to the point of like, all right, you're trying to lead people to do something you cannot do. You know, if you never had to re-enter society, then how would you be able to help someone successfully re-enter? Um, you know, programs like that, get the book in those type of programs, people who might want to sponsor those to where like, hey, you know, you have these, these returning citizens who come in, whether they we do want to be black, but returning citizen or whoever, here here's a here's a book. If they most people who come home from prison don't mind reading, like that's the population that actually still read. So that'll be something that can take home and see, like, all right, this is someone who who built something off of what we thought could be impossible. You know, just being able to awaken people to a different level. You know, because you have to have a different. That's what really made me want to write the book. Like I would go to different organizations. I would see you no know, nonprofits trying to say they can help people or people try to say they can do this, but there's still the problem. The problem had never really been solved because you don't know how you don't have the problem. So I wrote the book is so how you could dissolve that problem, you know, any level, even if they're not even into Bitcoin, then what it is, you still have to solve a problem. And most people can't solve the problem. All right. Well, on that good brother, Justin, we're going to wrap it up. We appreciate you. Uh, what's the last, what's your last words and tell us how we can get in contact with you. Last words would be, man, I um, want to just say again, thank you, Brother Sinclair Skinner, for all you do, man. You got the DMX shades on right now. Those are very great. <laughs> but again, I want... <laughs>
<laughs> I appreciate you, everything you do, man. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, go do so by email. It's simple, justin at bitcoinvegan.com. That's justin at bitcoinvegan.com. Uh, if you're on Twitter, just follow me at bitcoin underscore vegan. And if you're on Instagram, Bitcoin Vegan Justin. And uh, make sure you join the Black Bitcoin Billionaires on Clubhouse and support. I love Black people and everything that Brother Sinclair always puts down for us because you're definitely the GOAT, brother.